The cell membrane is kind of like a border between two countries. When it's closed off, there can't be any trade between countries. But when it's open, all kinds of harmful contraband can flow inside. Insulin tells your cells to open these borders to their maximum extent. And this not only allows more nutrients in, but also more poison. This includes everything from heavy metals to chemotherapy medication. Mr. Burns is making me eat all these drums of toxic waste. Jeez, that's rough. There must be two, three hundred gallons in here. Yeah, and even a teaspoon could cause a fatal tumor. Hey, you want to come bowling with us tonight? Okay. First, some bad news. There's been a death in the family from a very aggressive, rapidly spreading cancer. In fact, it happened so quickly, I barely had time to call her, and then she passed on a few hours later. It went from diagnosis a few weeks ago, to me being informed recently, and then suddenly to death. Surprisingly, her white blood cell count was close to zero before she even started chemotherapy. Lots of people seem to have these very rapid-acting cancers lately, and it seems that the immune system is simply not recognizing them, or is so inactive it just goes through people as if it's not there. And there's many possible explanations for this, but one of them is post-viral syndrome, and another one is that you've taken on damage through a bad diet or from other safe and effective sources. I also wanted to thank all the people who signed up for memberships on the channel. It's so overwhelming and generous of you guys. And I get a bonus for each person who signs up in the next few weeks. So it helps the channel out more than you probably would realize. This couldn't come at a better time with everything else that's happening right now. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. Sometimes people need chemotherapy, but it also has many side effects. Cancer cells tend to take in more nutrients than normal cells, but all of your cells will be damaged by these poisons. This can be unpleasant when the cells of your gut lining and skin are damaged, and it can be unsightly too, but it's much more serious when your immune cells are damaged. These immune cells are also what's required to fight off cancer in the first place, so chemotherapy today can take down today's cancer but some other cancer five years down the line may show up and find your body totally undefended. This is where fasting can save your life when undergoing chemotherapy. When you fast for three days before chemotherapy starts, or even do a fasting mimicking diet such as Prolon, your healthy cells stop taking in as many nutrients, and this protects them from taking in the poisons as well. The autophagy will also help cells not only to get rid of debris in the cell, but also stimulates DNA repair and the repair of the extracellular membrane. And this undoes much of the damage that this kind of poison can do to your body in the first place. Autophagy also helps destroy chemicals that don't belong in the cell, and this may directly get rid of some of these poisons. That's probably why oncologist Dr. Walter Longo has found that his patients can withstand several times the dose of chemotherapy when they're in a fasted state, while at the same time having far fewer side effects. This can save you from some of the nightmarish damage that chemo does to your body. I know because this helped my mother a great deal when she had cancer and the doctors were amazed at her results. Thankfully, she listened to me, and that is why she had minimal problems with chemo, and she was able to overcome them afterwards, even though her oncologist, who didn't tell her about any of these side effects beforehand, said that all of this damage would be irreversible. The real danger here is what chemotherapy and other safe and effective medications can do to your immune cells. Should also keep in mind that a great deal of medications can also push you into type 2 diabetes. And this has grave effects on your health, including fighting off cancer. It's your immune cells that not only do all the healing in the body and not only generate your muscles after working out, but they're also how your body fights off cancer and autoimmune disease. If they are damaged or killed off, you're going to face very dire problems, especially for your all-important T cells which are vital for the proper function of the immune system and they're very difficult to replace. 
When insulin is high in your body, not only does it completely turn off autophagy like flipping a switch, but it also has the opposite effect on nutrient intake. While insulin is generally portrayed as being important for storing glucose in cells, it actually does much more than that. It instructs cells to take in more nutrients of all kind and to grow, which obviously requires all kinds of nutrients. Not only does this fuel tumor growth, but during chemotherapy, it is telling your healthy cells to take in more poison. That includes the critically important T cells in your immune system. And without them, your immune system is basically worthless. Autoimmune bystander damage to T cells is what eventually leads to AIDS in people with HIV infections. But even when it happens to a lesser degree, it has extremely serious consequences for your health and for your aging. Glucose itself also damages your blood cells. This is how the A1C score works, and what they don't tell you is that the same effect also applies to white blood cells, and these don't regenerate nearly as quickly, if they can regenerate at all. So if you want to age your immune system as quickly as possible, and open yourself up to cancer and even death by the common cold, then a high-carb diet full of processed foods is the way to do it. If you want to have a healthy immune system, then keep those carbs low, take in plenty of broth, and above all, avoid processed foods like bread and anything that comes in a package. When you fast, your A1C drops like a rock because you can actually recycle these damaged cells and create new ones. That doesn't matter much for red blood cells, but it matters a lot for white blood cells because when these cells don't function properly, it can lead to autoimmune issues because they no longer properly identify friend from foe due to damaged extracellular matrix proteins like CD45+, and also damaged saccharides, which are both used for this purpose to help the cell identify friend from foe. A 72-hour fast regenerates up to one-third of these white blood cells and also releases stem cells, which are required to make new T-cells, which otherwise seldom happens in adults, if ever. Logically, you might think that fasting in a low-carb diet could also protect tumor cells, but in these cells, it has the opposite effect. Generally, they don't have the right cellular mechanisms to shut themselves down anymore because they've ramped everything up towards growing. And that means when the nutrients stop coming in, the cells just implode because they can't stop the process of splitting. And the ones that do have already turned this on by themselves. So you don't have to worry about fasting, turning on autophagy to protect the cells. It's just not an issue. Cancer doesn't play by the same rules as other cells. Cancer cells often have many, many times more insulin receptors, for example, compared to a normal cell, often thousands of them, especially in breast cancer. They can also produce IGF-1 by themselves, which is the actual growth signal in cells. That means they are generally going to take in more chemotherapy agents than healthy cells, though in slow-moving cancers like glioblastoma, this may not always be true. And that's why some of these cancers just don't respond well to chemo at all. So you have to be aware of that when you're looking at your treatment plan, if you have something like this happening in your body. And you can look up Pablo Kelly and see what he did to survive glioblastoma for over 10 years with the aid of Professor Seafried. When you fast for 72 hours before starting chemo, you still get the chemo where it needs to go into the cancer cells, but most of it will go into the cancer cells and avoid the healthy cells. In fact, they get even more of it because your healthy cells are taking up very, very little of it because the mechanism to take it up has been turned off. Your immune system itself also becomes more active at this time. These cells such as macrophages actually destroy and eat the cancerous cells and cellular debris and they use them for fuel. When your insulin is high, they're already well fed and this activity is greatly lessened. One of the main reasons that your body can fail to fight off cancer is that it surrounds itself with inflammation and this makes it hard for the immune system to even reach it. When you fast, inflammation is greatly reduced and this allows the immune bodies to get where they're supposed to go and to do their job properly. And it can still work quite well at the kidney level. And one of the jobs of uh, insulin at the kidney level is to actually hold 
on to sodium. So that's actually a, a much more important factor for increasing the sodium in your body and causing high blood pressure than is the amount of sodium that you consume. If you consume a, a modicum of sodium but have very high insulin levels, your body's going to try very hard to hold on to all of that sodium. You can, on the other hand, consume a whole lot of sodium but have very good low insulin levels and any excess sodium that can you consume will just come out in your urine. People don't realize that when they're overweight, typically most of it is actually water weight, i.e. inflammation. This is really what's killing you from being overweight. Inflammation raises your blood pressure. Inflammation makes your immune system unable to work properly. And inflammation allows cancer to hide away in your body where the immune system simply can't reach it. Professor Seyfried, a professor of biology who researches cancer, theorizes that cancer is a disease with an origin in mitochondrial dysfunction. So if we look at energy metabolism in normal cells, we see that the bulk of energy comes from oxidative phosphorylation. Now this is the cancer cell. Energy is coming from totally different places, the majority of energy. So we get, the cancer cell gets very little energy from oxidative phosphorylation because the cristae and the mitochondria are abnormal, as I've just shown you. But this cell still remains alive because it generates energy in the cytoplasm with lactic acid as a waste product, which is the Warburg effect, or succinic acid as a waste product coming from the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle and glycolysis generate the majority of energy through substrate level phosphorylation, a non-oxidative process, where much less energy now comes from, a, from uh, oxidative phosphorylation. So this is the key shift. The cancer cell is generating energy through different processes. So the question now, how, how does this relate to dysregulated cell growth? How does this disturbed energy metabolism link to the hallmarks of the disease? And this is what we've been able to show. We've been able to reconfigure the landscape of understanding cancer by placing the focus on the origin for this organelle, the mitochondria. So we know, and this was the concept of the oncogenic paradox that plagued and puzzled the field, even to this day, you'll read and see many examples where people simply don't understand how all the provocative agents that have been linked to the origin of cancer could cause the disease through a common pathophysiological mechanism. Carcinogens cause cancer. We know that. Uh, that's why they're called carcinogens. They cause cancer. Carcinogens damage, enter the mitochondria, and damages oxfos. Radiation can damage oxidative phosphorylation, leading to the origin of cancer. Intermittent hypoxia damages mitochondria, leading to the origin of cancer. Inflammation can damage mitochondrial function. Chronic inflammation is a known risk factor for the development of cancer. Rare inherited mutations like the BRCA1 and the leaf many mutations that people recognize, they operate by damaging mitochondria. The RAS oncogene is known to be a facilitator of cancer. It damages mitochondria. Viruses, we know of many different kinds of viruses, the papillomavirus, hepatitis C virus. Viruses can cause cancer because they either the virus themselves or the products of the virus damage the mitochondria. And of course, aging. A cancer is higher in older people than younger people. Age damages by just living on the planet age will damage mitochondria. This is the only comprehensive, fully explanatory theory of cancer. And guess what damages mitochondria? One of the main things is insulin itself. It's seldom mentioned on other channels, but your immune system is largely fueled by many nutrients and animal products, especially taurine. Taurine can increase the rate of phagocytosis in the body by as much as 400%, and that's something no medication or vitamin can do. This vital process is not only how cancer is consumed by immune cells, but also how the body gets rid of plaque and fibrosis, that is, scar tissue. This is what makes taurine vital to fighting cancer, and taurine supplementation has been shown to reverse immune T-cell exhaustion in cancer patients when fighting some of the worst cancers imaginable. I take 6 grams of taurine a day for this, 
And this also drives down homocysteine, which is a causative agent for both cancer and heart disease. On top of all of this, taurine is absolutely required for all protein synthesis. That means taking taurine can help prevent cancer, though we would need long-term studies to know by how much. Unfortunately, we don't get much taurine from most foods we eat today. I talk about why this is in a lot of older videos. Suffice to say that without completely changing the way we eat, the only way to get sufficient taurine in the diet to push down homocysteine and to prevent deficiency is through supplements. That's also true for glycine, which is why I take 6 grams of glycine a day. Glycine is also important for the immune system to work properly, and that is probably why chicken noodle soup is shown to help with colds and other infections. Broth is very rich in glycine, but unfortunately most people don't have broth on a daily basis anymore, even though we all did just about a century ago. A low carb diet will have more taurine, glycine, and other nutrients, but unfortunately special steps will be needed to ensure enough of both compared to a diet of just 100 years ago, let alone before agriculture was discovered, so it's probably better to just supplement it, especially with glycine which is often contaminated in animal sources today with glyphosate. These nutrients simply don't exist in significant levels in plant-based foods, and while the body can make some taurine from methionine, this amino acid is also lacking in plant protein. Taurine is also low or lacking in most cuts of meat we eat today, so unless you're eating things like beef heart, and many, many other things that I've talked about in other videos, then you're just going to be deficient, and it's probably best for everyone to just supplement it. The blueprint our bodies follow is a work of genius that defies description, but it is only designed to operate correctly with the proper nutrients and lifestyle pattern. We need nutrients found only in animal products for our immune system to work properly, and we need them every single day. Taurine is particularly important in this regard, and that's a shame because we're particularly deficient in it today, and even most of the cuts of meat we eat today simply don't have very much of it. We also need to avoid foods that spike our insulin to be healthy, and to avoid issues like cancer, especially high-carb packaged junk foods. And more than that, our body never fully activates its immune system without fasting, never goes into deep autophagy, and won't block the absorption of chemicals like chemotherapy agents or other toxins. Sometimes we need to not only watch what we eat, but actually eat nothing at all for a while. I'm kind of like Jesus, but not in a sacrilegious way. His tummy sounds angry, Daddy. Yeah, that's his stomach eating itself. <laughs>